and I'm gonna use my little tiny palette so this is my little travel palette that I love now it fits into a little Altoids tin with two little layers one fits on top of the other and then I just pop it out when I'm using it pop the tray out it doesn't have a lot of mixing space that's the only negative to it but I'm going to um, I'm going to paint this uh, lady's face now just to show you again I'll, I'll do it as though I'm travel sketching I've got two little brushes is all I have in my um, my little kit that I have on me if I'm paired right back so a little bit of yellow <clears throat> excuse me yellow ochre and I'm going to paint this in a loose sketchy style I just topped that one up so it's nice soft pigment so all this is damp I'll drop some mauve in for shadow and that's a bit red violet it needs to be a little bit bluer And the blue of the ribbon is much darker, so I'm not worried about, if I go over that, I'm not worried about it bleeding up into the top either. If I was, I can just push back down with a clean brush, <clears throat> nearly dry, clean, nearly dry brush. Now I'm going to come straight in, even though this is damp, I'm going to come straight into her face because I want the colours to bleed a little bit. Now I've just made far too pink a colour. But let's put it on and see <clears throat> so this is yellow ochre and a um, little bit of um, not a little bit too much of the alizarin crimson sorry sometimes i can't talk and paint so I want to leave some highlights if I can. I've missed the one on the nose, so I'll just push that colour back out. There's maybe just a little bit of highlight. One side of the uh, septum and maybe just the bottom lip. I'll leave a little bit of highlight there. The whites of the eyes I could just by pushing the pigment back a little bit I can lift it out so I might lift out I haven't even cleaned the brush off I'm just drying it you might be able to see on a piece of paper towel here it was a bit of shine so it looks whiter so I'm just lifting a fraction of color so that she's not all one color now she's still a little bit pink so I'm just picking up a little bit more yellow ochre and I'm mixing it now into where I had mixed the purple because she's shadowed over this side so I don't mind if that yellow has a bit of mauve in it and you know it makes a little bit of a grey colour she's shadowed all up in underneath the hat and down this side of the nose under the chin and perhaps under the eye and then I would let that dry until I'm ready for a for a second layer of colour the same skin tone though I can see I've got some neck showing it's in shadow though so I'll throw the mauve in and then she's got an orange top <coughs> excuse me sorry
so I would love to tell you what colours I'm using, but I don't know what that is there. But the other two are Sminky, Cad Red, Orange and Light Red. And then there's something down in that corner here, I'm not sure. And I was explaining before while I was drawing her body and her clothes that I try now to um, draw in a style that is um, not quite blind contour drawing, but contour drawing. So I try not to lift the pencil off the um, paper as I'm drawing. And it helps me to find the, the width of areas the length of the arm you know you can see all those little lines that are formed by that style of drawing and i find it more interesting now than what my drawings were like before starting to draw in this style so you can see now parts of this have dried really quickly this sketchbook um is that's one of the challenges of it but at the same time, I kind of like the cauliflowering that will happen. I'm just going to soften the edges though. It's not quite as light here as what it looks on the video. That's um, the flare of the camera. And so now I've just picked up, you can see this dark mix, which is um, nearly always ultramarine blue and brown matter a lot of people would use burnt sienna instead of brown matter and i just picked up far too much water it was a much better texture before i touched my brush into the water because this is nearly dry this is drying i want to i need to have my paint drier than the paper that I'm adding it to if I want it to sit where I put it so you can see it bled up in there because it's a little bit a little bit wetter than I intended and you can hear I'm actually cleaning fully the bottom of the brush in the tub you can hear that clicking that's me fully rubbing the brush onto the bottom of the um, water well so that I remove the colour before I change colours. So the shadows in this top are quite dark, which is why I've gone into such a dark colour. But I love how it's separated in places and looks more blue. If I'm worried that it's against the light I can just add a little bit more orange and that should perhaps be darker orange because it's tucked away and hidden down behind her hand so back to the skin tone I will add a little bit more yellow ochre to it because it was a little bit too pink Now it's probably a little touch too yellow. And I mentioned before I work um, the hands kind of like paddles. I don't, I don't um, differentiate all of the fingers early stage. You know, I'm trying just to give the suggestion of a hand. So I've just picked up alizarin crimson then to try and tone that a little bit more. And I'm also going to put some shadow. So the ultra blue mixed with alizarin crimson from Mauve. In the picture her hand I mentioned is covered by a water bottle. So I was kind of guessing it's all in shadow. So I was kind of guessing how that would look and I popped a watch on her. So I could get a feel for where her wrist might be. And just a little bit of shadow on this hand and on the fingers. I 
I should have narrowed this should be narrower here I feel like now looking at the picture so I can fix that when I come to do her pants a little bit I can put shadow shadow up into there she's got these Larry greeny gold pants on And because this sketchbook dries really quickly, you can see I'm not actually disturbing too much of my other washes by coming in with the wet colour. Now straight into indigo, my very favourite colour. I've got too much on the brush, so that's why I just dropped a bit there. And now I'm going to clean the brush because like I said, I had too much paint on it. And so I took the excess moisture out and I'm just going to smooth that a little bit. I can narrow down this um, as well. And so here, remember I said I wanted to thin down her wrist a little bit. And I want the fingers to be in shadow. So while this is damp, I'll just come in with a little bit more of the blue. Pulling down into the green because I want them to bleed in. I don't want that outlined look that they had because I really didn't draw them properly in order to have them detailed and Often how I have it propped on my lap, um, it doesn't, it doesn't happen as much. So darker and thicker paint, if I want to, you know, make some shapes, your paint must be thicker and drier than that, than the paint you've put down first. So if I want the pink to keep it shaped next to that blue I've got pretty much just solid pigment no water in my brush sometimes obviously you would wait and do something that's not touching um, but when I do these little sketches and studies I actually want the colors to bleed to bleed into each other. I wanted a lighter green then, but I've touched into the indigo. Just these are a whole pile of little baskets. My video stopped yet again due to memory, even though I deleted 800 and something things just before. So it skipped only a little bit down here. No loss. So I'm just mixing a bit of skin tone again. I've gone too pink, so I'm going to come over here. Just to come back in the shadow areas up around the top. And so now I'll intentionally not go over all of what I first... Um, all of the, the whole area that I first covered with skin tone.
Let me touch the lips. So now I've cleaned my brush and I'm just softening either side. Softening the, the, the edge of the colour. So I've got a bit of shadow on the bottom of her nose, running up the side, shadow underneath the lip, sorry, underneath the nose, along there. And now I want to also add some mauve to it. And then lovely, really dark colour in under the hat so that she blends in. I'm doing this while the face is damp because I want her face to blend into the shadow in the hat. And then she's got a bluey ribbon. Again, I've got to make sure I don't leave a little white halo of dry paper there, unless I wanted a highlight, but this is in shadow, so there's no highlight along that ribbon under her chin. And this almost blends right in. You can't see in the photo any differentiation up in there. So I want to come quite dark. Leave it onto her face. I can use this now. So while I've got this colour, if I want to just create a little bit of texture. The neck needs a bit more shadow. And so if I thought I had the dark on my brush, so I just came in with the dark. If you then feel like it needs more skin tone, you just go back and add the skin tone into the darker shadow colour. I don't really want that to be clear, what's neck and what's shirt, because I didn't, um, I didn't draw that very clearly there. So I might just darken in under the chin and darken the lip, darken under the nose there. And then I would let that dry. So I'm coming back to finish off this figure that I was painting earlier. And there's just a few things left I would do. And one is to just put a little touch of white gouache into the whites of the eyes. Now they're not white, they're in shade. So she's not going to have bright whites, but it just helps a little bit. And you'll notice that's why I patted it. I popped a little touch of white gouache. I'm working straight out of the top of the tube with a pointy brush. Um, and I just touched it with my finger because I want to soften it. The other colour that works really well for white in shade is Holbein Lavender. Uh, and that's this colour here. And I use that a lot if I want to depict white that's in the shade. So I just want to soften this a little touch more so it's a little bit too bright. So just a clean brush, tiniest bit of water just to pick up a little touch of paint. And I feel like her neck needs a little touch more skin tone, particularly just maybe on this side. So I'll just drop in a little bit of an orange mix. 
and it's more because this um actually what i need to do is make this more clear that that's the that's the jacket coming down there the neck looks too wide is what's bothering me in the neck so i'll make that jacket more obvious that it's the jacket or the hoodie And because I've popped that white in the eyes there, now I actually feel like she needs the tiniest touch of dark in her um, in her pupil area. And iris. So it's risky doing this while the white is damp. The other option is really just pencil just to darken it a little touch with pencil because I really don't want to make it look like she has eyeliner or particularly dark lines around her eyes. So pencil is probably easier. To just get that um, extra touch of definition right where you want it. say as I fiddle. That's better. And then in one of the other videos we talked about how this little point of the outer of the lip is nearly as dark as the pupils of the iris of the eye in the painting. As dark as your darkest point. So I'm just dropping a little touch of dark into that area as well. And then I would actually see her pretty much as finished. I haven't done um, I haven't done the basket down here, um, but that's that's easy to whip that on. My my phone yesterday ran out of battery, uh, ran out of space unfortunately, so it wasn't videoing very well. So I came to a stop, um, but that's irrelevant to what we were talking about in terms of the face. And this is just a sketchy style of face that's a little bit more detailed than the very distant walking figures that we did in one of the other videos to give you an idea. And then I'll do some more videos that are more portrait based um, so they're less sketchy.